Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Sniper Elite 4. Today we'll be ranking every DLC pack for Sniper Elite and discussing which ones are worth getting or not. I would like to say that I'm not going to be including the Season Pass in this ranking as that's just one purchase to get every DLC in the game and if you're buying more than say 3 DLC packs then just get the Season Pass and be done with it. Additionally, Every single DLC pack except the Camouflage Rifles pack is good. So just because there's a pack in 7th place doesn't mean it's bad. And also just before we start the video I'd like to plug my Discord server. It's a great community and the link is in the description so go join that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. In 12th place we have the worst DLC pack in the game. Uh, the Camouflage Rifle Skin Pack. This DLC adds two skins for each of the standard rifles in the game. This DLC could potentially be useful in multiplayer, where every single advantage counts, but generally, I'd say stay away from this one as it just isn't useful, especially seeing as I'd rather use the gold camo. What could make it better is if you got these skins for every rifle and not just the standard ones, and also, it would work perhaps if it was bundled in with, say, the Covert Heroes character pack, which would work well and it would be a bit more reasonable to buy a solely cosmetic DLC, which is an excellent transition into the Covert Heroes character pack in the number 11 spot. The Covert Heroes pack adds three really cool characters to the game. We have Rosa Petrovna, the Russian sniper who looks very cool and is the only Russian character in the game and has nice subtle colours for multiplayer. We also get the British Commando who is my go-to character and very cool looking with his camouflaged clothes being good for multiplayer and he doesn't have any massive headgear that could stick out and give him away. And lastly we have the ghillie suit which is an excellent addition to the game and is probably the very best choice for hiding in forests and other green areas. Overall, the Covert Heroes pack is good, but when every other DLC is excellent, there isn't much point. In 10th place, we have Deathstorm. I've talked about Deathstorm 1 uh, as a mission in my Ranking Every Mission video, so for a better view on the level itself, go have a look at that video. Deathstorm 1 is a confused and cluttered level, with dodgy objectives and a very strange feel compared to the other levels in the game. And if I could go back and change my ranking every mission video, I think I would switch Magazeno Facility and this level around, leaving Deathstorm 1 as the worst mission in the game. I think the only reason to get this one is because it's the precursor to Deathstorm 2 and 3, which are excellent. In 9th place, we have the Allied Forces Rifle Pack. This DLC includes the M1 Carbine, a high-capacity semi-auto rifle with low recoil, the M1 Garand, the standard issue medium range semi-auto, and the Rossmark III, a powerful long range bolt action rifle. The M1 Carbine is poor with all the other semi-auto rifles being better than it, although it does have exceptionally low recoil which makes it a unique pick for close quarters as there's no rifle quite like it. The M1 Garand is the KT price of semi-auto rifles as it doesn't have the CQB capability of the M1 Carbine or the range of the ZH-29 and is completely outclassed by its two main rivals, the G43 and the SVT. The Rossmark III, however, is an excellent bolt-action rifle and whilst it isn't quite good as the Mosin Nagant or the Kakano, it is properly good nonetheless. In the number 8 place, we have the Lock and Load Weapons Pack. This pack includes the SVT, which is a competent semi-auto with high damage and decent range. It also includes the drilling, which in my opinion is one of the most fun weapons in the game, even if it isn't exactly the best weapon. And also the Mauser M712, and I'm not even going to beat around the bush here. It's about as useful as a cable car track made of licorice, and is hands down the worst weapon in the entire game. This pack isn't bad, but realistically you're only buying it for the drilling, which isn't even that good anyway, despite the fact it is very fun. In 7th we find the Night Fighter pack, 
which I must say is a very good value pack with four weapons, two characters and rifle skins to boot. In terms of weapons, we get the Mauser rifle, which sadly is at the lower end of the bolt action scale, and whilst definitely being capable, won't be smashing through the Axis forces anytime soon. We also have the OVP, which is dreadful, the worst SMG in the game, and just feels like a Mauser pistol dropped a brick on its puberty switch. We also have the Nagant revolver, which is an incredible gun, but its chubby 10.5 second reload speed is enough to drive me away. And the Beretta M1934, which despite being hideously ugly, is perhaps one of the best pistols in the game, with incredible accuracy coupled with good fire rate and capacity. We also get the nighttime rifle skins for the Mauser and standard rifles. These skins are nice, but once again, they aren't available for all rifles, and I'd just rather use the gold camo anyway. We also get the Night Raid character in male and female versions. Whilst they both look very good, I feel the male version of the skin is a bit better, but that's just my opinion. In 6th place, we have the Cold Warfare pack. This is the first pack that we'll be talking about that is truly excellent, filled to the brim with useful characters and weapons. We get the ZH-29 rifle, which is, in my opinion, the best semi-auto rifle, with excellent capacity, high damage, and a 16x zoom. We also have the PPSH-41, with incredible fire rate, good damage, surprisingly low recoil, and a quite frankly obese 71 round magazine. Lastly, we have the best pistol in the game, the TT-33, which has a good capacity, high damage, decent accuracy. We also get winter themed rifle camouflage with a snow smear sort of pattern which I think looks pretty bad. I think they should have just gone with a white cloth wrap, similar to the night fighter rifle skins, uh, but just white. We also get the winter commando skins in both male and female versions. I think the female version looks better here because the male version has silly headgear but ultimately, in multiplayer, the male variant is probably the better choice because it's a bit more low profile. In fifth place, we have the Urban Assault Pack, which is excellent value as this pack just happens to be my go-to loadout. The Winchester is an excellent rifle, and whilst it is rather middle of the pack when you think about it, it's my favourite nonetheless. The Sten is hands down the best SMG in the game, with good fire rate, low recoil, good accuracy and damage. The PPK is a dreadful miserly excuse for a pistol, and worse in every way to the M1934. However, it is still my favourite because it makes me feel like a World War II James Bond. I just really like all the weapons in this pack, and they're all really good except for the PPK, which is as deadly as a small paper bag filled with flour. In terms of rifle skins, you get the urban rifle skins, which, I mean, they're there, they're fine, but they won't be amazing anytime soon. And you also get the urban assault characters. Both of whom look good, however I prefer the female version, because the male version's headgear is just ridiculous. In 4th place, we have Deathstorm 2. Deathstorm 2 is an excellent level with interesting and varied objectives, an excellent layout, fantastic sightlines and some of the best combat locations in the series. I've talked more in depth about this level in my mission ranking video, but go check that out. But in short, Deathstorm 2 is as close to perfect as we've got. But not for long! Deathstorm 3, which takes third place, is just the best level design in any video game ever, with the perfect amount of combat, the best sight lines, the best nail-biting feeling of tension, the highest the stakes have ever been in the fight against the Nazi war machine, the best variety in enemies and weapons, the best non-linear level structure you've ever seen, and the perfect amount of near unacceptable violence against the neo-fascist soldiers of the Third Reich. Not that an unacceptable level of violence towards Nazis actually exists, as killing Nazis is basically wholesome family entertainment at this point. 
In second place, we have the Silent Warfare pack. This pack includes the Grease Gun, which is mediocre at best, and the HDM, which is like a well rod if the well rod decided it wanted to stop being effective at killing people. Overall, not the best offering, right? Wrong. This pack's one redeeming feature is the Denial Carbine. With similar damage to a Nerf gun, the bullet trajectory similar to the flight path of Apollo 1, and an effective range measured in the newfangled unit of measurement known as Tom Cruises, uh, the Delisle has a range of three Tom Cruises, which in old money is known as seven and a half feet. However, the Delisle is permanently silenced, which means that the way you go about the game is completely flipped on its head. Playing through the game with the Delisle is like playing an entirely new game and is a majestic experience, and definitely on the list of things to do before you die, it is just so different when you use that gun, it's unreal. And in first place, as the best DLC in the game is, you've guessed it, Target Führer, also known as the mission where you shoot Adolf Hitler in the balls. Target Führer is fantastic because of the sheer replay value, with 101 ways to dispose of history's biggest idiot. Seriously, there are a lot of reasons to kill Hitler. Overall, Target Führer is simply a fantastic mission, and I've run out of things to say but need to make this paragraph longer. Anyway, goodbye. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. It costs you nothing and it's a great way to help out the channel. Stay safe and goodbye.